and we're back. This is Warrior, and I am about to do a character review on Princess Leia. So here's Princess Leia in all her glory. And uh, I just wanted to go over some of her abilities, and I want to do an, uh, an overall review to show you uh, what kind of a character she is, what kind of situations you'd want her in, uh, uh, when you maybe would not want to use her, um, and then just give you a little bit of gameplay so you can kind of see how she plays out and what her abilities do. She is a rebel, and she is an attacker, so of course she's aligned with the light side. And she's great for the Rebel Assault. She's great for the latest Palpatine event. She's also great in the arena. She's great for the light side battles. She's great if you are building a team for Galactic War. Essentially, you can use Leia anywhere you want in the game. Now, up until recently, you had to spend money. She was pretty much a type of Chromium type exclusive. Um, and then they have recently moved her to the arena shipments. And since they moved her to the arena shipments, she is much more popular with individuals as far as getting her and bringing her up. Now, my Leia is not going to be as cool as some Leias that are in existence. And the reason for that is obviously my Leia um, has mods that I w was able to acquire. And my my mods are not as cool as some people's mods. I, uh, are, I'm only able to currently do um, health mods, defense, and then one other, and then all the rest of them are pretty much locked. I, I just don't have enough characters developed to run through and do all of those mod challenges. So I had to really be picky and choosy, farm a few mods best for her, and you can see I'm using a couple of five dot mods, and then a four dot mod, and a couple of three dot mods, but they get the trick done with her. So the first thing I want to do is go over attacks and abilities and then we will go into my mod and how and why I modded him, her and then who she works well against and then we'll get to see some gameplay. So the very first ability, her basic, and this is a super awesome basic, is called Hair Trigger. It's going to deal physical damage to an enemy with a 55% chance to attack a second time and a 40% chance to attack a third time. If I Omega this, she'll also get a 50% chance to gain turn meter. I can tell you that this ability happens quite frequently. It often goes off, and a lot of times it will go off three times. And she hits. Now she's hitting tanks. You know, her, her damage is slightly reduced now because of the armor. But she hits for, for me, well, you'll see when I do the video, but uh, upwards into the seven to 9,000 per shot. Now, that's already high end of damage per second in comparison to some of the other characters in the game. And when she can do this two or three times, and she's doing it 50% of the time, two or three times, uh, that is pretty insane. She can drop, I, I've seen her against some lower level characters do, you know, 21,000 to 27,000. That's almost as much as a Ray. Uh, now it's inconsistent, although Ray, if she has a negative status effect, is inconsistent as well. Um, but she's not as squishy. Leia is not as squishy as Ray. So the hair trigger is a basic. You don't have to do anything but, but the natural thing. The, um, the computer, when it's playing your characters in Arena, uh, really give this the benefit of the doubt. It seems like every time I go against a Leia, her hair trigger goes off probably three out of every four times. She gets a double or a triple shot. Uh, and that just seems like the computer always gives the benefit to the other team and triggers those abilities 100% of the time, it feels like, especially like a revive or a stun. Those things just seem to go off much better with a competitor's team. The second that she has is called Rebel Tactics. It's a special ability, and it has a cooldown of four, but I can Omega it and get a cooldown of three. Now, the cooldown of three is pretty cool because she stealths for three turns, and so you could literally live entirely in stealth mode, and that is pretty amazing once you have it omega But you gain stealth and a 25% critical hit damage for three turns. In addition, you get a 55% chance to gain offense up for three turns. Now this is awesome because obviously when her offense is up and her 25% critical hit damage is up, that's where her damage is coming from. That is why she hits for so hard when she hits, because her basic attacks are not supposed to be this good but this is this exact ability is why 
she hits harder. So she goes stealth, which, by the way, if you're using her in the first, uh, in, in, in a, if you're using her in raids, and you're using her in the very first tier, of, a tier one of the raids, she is excellent because she'll stay stealth. She won't be a target. She does a lot of damage quickly. And if she comes out of stealth and they put the death mark on her, and that's what you hope for, all you have to do is re-stealth and the death mark goes away. So this stealth is awesome. It's really hard for people in the arena to target her and take her out. And she chews through people almost as fast as Ray. And so it really becomes stressful for other players uh, because they really want to take her out. This pretty much assures that they can't ever target her until she's the last person on the board. And that's exactly the way you want it. You want her there uh, till the end, just tearing through the other team. Uh, in addition, of course, she gets that offense up for the entire duration of this uh, special ability and just the stealth and then, of course, the critical hit damage. That's so awesome. Um, I don't use her as a leader, so I have not developed this, but essentially she gives Rebel Allies critical chance. Um, there are so many other characters that have so many other better leader abilities. I really don't see Leia as a leader, and I don't see this ability as in-depth enough. If you look, there are some leaders who have really deep leadership qualities. When I say deep, I mean there are multiple facets to their leadership ability that they bring to the table. And I'll show you the leader that I use and why in a minute. Um, but then the last ability she has is called Against All Odds. And this is Mac. This is a unique. And so um, this obviously the uniques you cannot Omega. But whenever she attacks, she has a 55% chance to grant every ally critical chance up for two turns and a 55% chance to recover 5% of her health. Now, the 55% chance, I can tell you, it goes off probably closer to 75% of the time um, when I watch. And as you see later on, you'll see how often, pretty much every time she shoots her gun, there's a 50-50 chance that everybody else is gonna get this ability. And when she shoots two or three times, it's pretty much a guarantee that between those two to three shots, this is going to trigger. And so essentially, because she shoots so often, she will trigger this and you're gonna give all of your allies critical chance up. Now this is a pretty cool combination if you're gonna combine it with other characters that have special abilities that have critical chance uh, of needs, such as a Genosian soldier, or a lot of people are using Lando and he needs to do critical chance or critical damage to the opposing team. So there are some really cool synergies that she can naturally bring to the table for a lot of different teams. But even if there's zero synergy available, this is synergy in and of itself. She is beefing all your characters up and giving them that critical chance up. That is absolutely huge and she does it for two turns but every time she's shooting she's potentially giving it for two turns if you watch the battle later you'll notice for almost the entire battle she will have critical chance up on my entire team and they will all be doing immensely uh, an immense amount more damage to the opposing team so this is a great ability again this is just a unique so there's nothing that needs done it just happens and of course the hair trigger just every time she shoots it's going to possibly trigger trigger this uh, against all odds now i have her max uh, level at 79 that's as high as i can take her she'll only go up one more level that's to 80 and that's going to be a couple of days away and I do have her max geared. She's at gear 10. These last two are, of course, not available some other day. If they decide to make this character stronger, they will open this gear up for the ability to make her stronger. If they don't want to make her any stronger, basically they want to keep her nerfed, they'll never open these up. So it really depends on um, how they want to modify characters and how they want to make them stronger or weaker. This is just the freedom they have to be able to add additional strengths to this character down the road. Um, I use her as a, a damage character. Uh, you should always on a team have a balanced team, I feel. The balance on your team should obviously be a very solid leader. You should have a very solid leader picked. Um, you can then go with one or two damage characters, such as her or Ray, and then you should have one or two tanks. Um, and if you have one tank, maybe a healer or another support character. Um, a lot of people are putting in an AOE character. AOE is, of course, you know, the attack on everyone. So they're putting in someone like Jedi Knight Anakin 
or um, Lando Calrissian because of the crazy AoEs, that's not a bad idea. It does make your team a little squishier if the team can initially survive the AoEs and things like that because you don't have quite as many tanks and whatnot. Um, I do choose to go with a double tank team in the arena currently. I did just mix it up. It was a single tank team, now it's a double tank team. And then I have two uh, very powerful attackers, uh, Ray and, and Leia. And then I use Akbar as the lead. Briefly, I am going to show you her stats. Um, and I, I want to show the mods will actually show up in here. So you can see she's very high in agility. That is the middle stat. And she's average with strength and intelligence. With the agility, what really comes to the table for her is her increases the physical damage, the agility does the physical critical rating and armor. So this is really important if you want her to do a lot of damage and she's built to do a lot of damage. Of course, her health and her protection combined are almost 30,000. They're about a little over 29,000. And I've only gotten all that up a little bit with mods, not a whole lot. But if you look at her speed, I wanted her faster than my Akbar. And there's a reason for that. I'll go into that later. But her, her speed is 241. Now my Admiral Akbar, as the leader, gives all my um, rebels 25% speed, or 25 speed. So 25 speed onto this makes her, you know, a 266 on speed. That is a lightning fast Leia. So before anything happens, the first thing that gets to happen is my Leia gets to go stealth, which will trigger Akbar to shoot, and then Akbar will get a go. And then after Akbar, I have my Ray. And the reason why I have Akbar go second is because I want Akbar to set up his special ability, which gives one of my characters the ability to do two turns, and I want Ray to go twice because she does a ton of damage that way. So that's why I have my Leia so fast. I want her to go first and get into stealth because once she's there, she's hard to kill, and she does a lot of damage, and she boosts the entire team up once she's in stealth. That ability gives the possibility of going critical up for the rest of the team. Um, I haven't messed with her critical damage at all, but if I was to boost that up, obviously she would do more damage. I do have her potency and tenacity both up over 40. That's not famous or anything, but definitely um, her potency is naturally high already, but I got her tenacity a, a little higher than her potency. And you definitely want tenacity on characters um, that are not as strong because if they're going to put in detrimental effects, you want to make sure that you're warding off a good percentage of those. She, surprisingly, has no health steal. Not all characters do, but she does not. Um, and then her physical damage is almost 2,600, which is pretty decent as a base stat. And her physical critical chance, I mean, 42.7. She's almost 50% of the time going to crit, which is awesome. And her armor is decent at almost 30% armor, which is the reduction of physical damage to her. And then, of course, her special damage is less. Um, and then her resistance is just okay for special survivability. Um, this is her in a nutshell. I do want to show you how she works in the arena. So let's go ahead and go to squad arena. Now, something that is fun to see is one, the guy to the right has been running a very similar team to me. He's got the Leia Ray combo for damage, and then he has um, his Han Solo as his tank, and then of course Admiral Akbar as a lead. But he also has Rex, and Rex is pretty amazing. Uh, truth be told, if I had that team, I would have Rex as the leader. Uh, Rex tears through teams as a leader. He's amazing. But what I wanted to do is show you Palpatine. Obviously, that's kind of the, the craze right now is everyone wants Palpatine. And there's this team over here in fourth place that has a Palpatine lead. And he's not the only one. I'm seeing more and more Palpatines popping up. It's pretty amazing the stun and how potent his stun can become. There's actually two right there. And then, of course, we, well, in these, there's three. And then, of course, we see a lot of OP1. OP1 is still real popular on my server. I am absolutely not afraid of OB1 at all. I enjoy seeing OB1 teams, they're very easy for me to beat. Yes, I miss occasionally. That still doesn't stop me from slaughtering the team. Um, but the Emperor Palpatine 
teams are uh, uh, up and coming and they're really fun. It's nice to see the meta changing, the uh, the statistics of who's being used. I like that there's a droid team in here. They're, they were kind of a dying breed, so to see a droid team is kind of fun. Um, and then, of course, there are just some interesting random characters through here. You can see Obi-Wan. Of course, Admiral Akbar is is up there definitely as a popular leader. Um, since I'm kind of the lead in this particular uh, shard or this particular um, server, a lot of people do kind of, you know, take what the number one person is doing and consider that on their team. And that's not a bad thing at all. So if you go to me, you can see my team. I've of course got Admiral Akbar as the lead. Um, and then you can see my two DPS, Ray and Leia. And then I have my two tanks. Um, I do have all of these characters at seven stars. I have them at um, gear nine or above. I have two of them at gear 10. Ray is maxed out and Leia is maxed out, which they're the ones that do damage. The rest are waiting to go to level 80 before they can be max geared, but I um, I can't you know gear them up until obviously I get them there to level 80, which hopefully will happen by Monday. So let's go back to matches. Let's see how Leia works. By the way, Leia works really really well with anyone. You do not have to have Admiral Akbar. I hear a lot of people say you know I don't like Admiral Akbar, so you know who else would she work with? Honestly, she's as good on any team. She's a standalone because she can go stealth and take care of herself. She does a lot of damage. She builds your critical ability on your team, so your your team crits much more often, and they all do more damage. So she is one of those filler DPS characters that you can just throw on any team, and she will do very, very well. She's decent to gear. She only has a couple of raid gear parts, and she's somewhere in the neighborhood of 600 for the purples, which is about average. So let's. I want to do the Emperor Palpatine just to see um, how this goes. The, um, I fought an Emperor Palpatine earlier, and it was actually one of the hardest battles that I had had recently. So I'm going to go ahead and do battle. And we are going to see how I do. Um, normally I auto battle through these just to get mine done for the day. I, I sit at number one pretty much all day. But um, I do want to go Ray. Now I could stealth. And actually because I want to ensure that I kill Ray on the first shot, I want to go ahead and take some of her damage down. And you can see she got two attacks. Now I'm going to do Ray and do a triple attack. And that automatically takes care of their damage character that I would be concerned about. And of course, their tank has taunted, but look at that, four stuns. How amazing is that? Now, my, I get counters often with my fives. Fives is amazing. He calls in an assist, just like Genosian Soldier. Now, all this damage and all this red debuff that's above my characters, I am completely not concerned about. All I have to do is press this middle button for him. He'll clear them, they gain life, and it triggers. Now, that's not too bad. Let's go ahead and we'll stealth Leia, Akbar will shoot. And then the only thing is, is Emperor Palpatine is pretty awesome. Look at the stun again, three out of five. There was four out of five earlier. Um, he's just very squishy. Did you see that? 83 and 9300 damage. Emperor Palpatine um, was killed pretty quickly though. Uh, but Leia, she just tore up Emperor Palpatine. Look at how she shoots. 87, 45, 83. So she shot three times, and she did over 20,000 damage, which is great because there you go. I got 12,000 out of my ray. Let's go ahead and use my tank. There's 78, 43. She shot twice, and she did almost 12,000, and then here's the end of it. So as you can see, having Leia on the team is just um, an excellent idea. She shreds through individuals, she boosts up your team, and she brings a lot to the table as far as abilities. So I would just suggest that if you have an idea of a team you want to build and you're looking for a good DPS character, Leia would be a phenomenal character to go with. And just keep in mind, Leia, you can find her shards in the squad arena shipments right here and at the very top. So all you got to do is come in here each day with your arena tokens and buy that up and you're going to do just fine. I appreciate this. Uh, enjoy the video. I hope that this helps you with Princess Leia and knowing um, how to set her up. Uh, maybe some of the mods to drop, boosting up her health and her defense, also boosting up her speed so she can get that 
rebel tactics going first so she's not a target for individuals uh, and then I hope that you just uh, take this information for what it is it's my opinion and uh, if you're building a rebel team she's a phenomenal add-on as always keep your gaming on warrior out